Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to 19 Miles to Music Row. Glad you're here. Yeah. It's going to be a wonderful night with a return visit from Gordon Kennedy for our Inside the Hits portion of the show. I want to mention to you that Karen Keir, who prepares all our amazing food back there, has a new fall menu that we would like to debut this evening. So in addition to the favorite chicken pesto, the handmade pies, her chicken pesto pie, she now also makes a smoked buffalo chicken salad slider. Did you get all that? Mm. Yeah, black bean sweet potato wrap, a tomato basil soup with cheese. Wait a minute. Sliders? Cheese? Help me out, Karen. Little cheese sandwiches, let's just say that. <laughs> These little cheese sandwiches to dip in. So really, really good food for you. Tonight, I hope you'll enjoy restrooms in the lobby. Uh, oxygen masks drop from the ceiling if we need them. So I think we're all, we've got everything we need tonight. I want to remind those of you that are new, first of all, to those that are new, welcome. Those of you that are, have come back, welcome back. This show works because of you guys. Writers, uh, songwriters spend all this time either alone or with their colleagues co-writing, but it's a lot of time in their own uh, environment. And to get to come out and play their songs for somebody is a really, really big deal. So it's a really big deal that you guys have shown up again tonight. We've been three years at this, and um, God seems to keep pushing easy buttons, so we'll keep doing it. But it's because of you. So thank you for coming out tonight. We appreciate it. Our committee consists of Bill Deaton and uh, Jody Todd, Denny Wayne Rudolph, and Cortland Fuquay, who is not here this evening, and little old me, Dan Keene. Glad to uh, be with you here tonight. Welcome. <clears throat> um, the format. We have three up-and-coming writers that are going to start us off. And just so you'll know, uh, before the beginning, we are talking, and uh, I, we talked about to each one of them about the fact that this is a free show, that there's no cover charge, and each one of these generous people has committed to give you at least a $1 show. <laughs> so I want to thank you for your generous hearts, and, and we'll be keeping track, you know, but yeah, but yeah exactly. pretty confident that we'll get that. So thank you for doing that. Um, with us... Next to me here is a fine young man named Anthony, no, named Stephen Cade, excuse me. Stephen Cade, hello, hey, from I'm, Houston, right? Yes, originally from Houston, Texas. And you've got yeah. merch. Oh, I got a hoot in there. It is. There's somebody from Texas. You've got, right there, Austin. All right. Austin. You've got welcome to the United States, both you Texans. <laughs> glad you're, glad oh, you're they're here. They're just mad because we got all the guns. That's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And he's got his lovely family here. They'll be helping out with some great merch back at the merch table there during our break and then after the show. So feel free to hang around and, and talk with, with uh, Stephen. How did music come into your life? Is it a family thing or do you... Or listen to the car radio and got turned on, or what happened? Well, I, I used to live right around the corner from this place called Mickey Gillies. Oh, I heard of it. Yeah, that. somebody remembers that in the house, right? Well, uh, people like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just people, can't help it. I hear Mickey Gillies, and I just yeah. start dancing. <laughs> start doing the two-step. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we lived right around the corner there, and then, uh, you know, as, as a child growing up, you know, a lot of people... Uh, would come in and play there, you know, um, you know, some of the big stars would come in and play at Mickey's place that were, you know, no one at the time, but uh, turned out to be someone's later, right, yes. so um, I got, I got infected with the country music at an early age, early age, just you know, hanging around Mickey's, yeah, the stage just, door, yeah, like, sneak in out. who's, you know, you know, Faith Hill used to go there way back in the day, she yeah. would watch shows, you know, so, yeah. It's crazy. It's got a lot of history, but now, of course, it, it burnt down. Now he's got cha wow. chains and everything, and then uh, it's pretty crazy. Hmm. It's good, though. But uh, music really has always been a big part of my life. Um, growing up in church, singing in church. Mm -hmm. um, also have been a worship leader for uh, about 15 years now. And uh, so when I'm, when I'm not singing at AJ's downtown and Broadway, then I'm 
uh, asking God for, for forgiveness Forgive on Sunday, right. Sunday morning. Sorry about the gig, Lord. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, man. Yeah. God made music. Yes, he did. Yes. Glad you're involved in it. Well, yeah. thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Cade. Uh, thank you. Next to Stephen is Sydney Lett. Hello, hey, guys. Sydney. How are y'all? Fine. <laughs> you, uh, Grew up an Iowa girl, right? I did. I'm a Midwestern girl. Oh man, sure I love am. that. I told Sydney that I went to college in Nor at Northern Colorado in Greeley, and all my best girlfriends were Iowa girls. They're, I don't know if we it's, try, the we try. it's the corn or what, but great. It's, gotta be. it's all we have, so yeah. I don't know what else it yeah. could be. They're not they're not uh, polluted by any other crummy stuff. Just oh, of course not. Good corn. Exactly. You know, smart, smart people and good people there. And then you ended up in Charlotte. I did. I'm a little bit north of Charlotte, North Carolina, in a little town called Mount Ola by Salisbury. Mount Ola. Mount Ola. Ola. U L L A. Yep. We don't even have a stoplight. Really. <laughs> We're kind of not even a town. We're just kind of there, I think. <laughs> well, you're putting it on the map then, aren't you? Oh, I'm going to do my golly. best. I'm going to do my very best. <laughs> yeah. Well, how did music enter your life? Honestly, music has always been the only way I could communicate, really. You're doing um, pretty good right now. It's, it's taken a while. I'm okay. 25, and so we're not that's done 24 yet either, years, so. I think. Okay. All right. <laughs> but uh, my grandpa used to play old school country for me all the time, so oh. I grew up. He actually cut me out a circle of wood in the backyard so I could pretend I was playing the Opry. So that oh, was always... wow. Always my dream, so That's I grew up cool on. Touch. That's Thank a cool you. touch. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was. Uh, he actually passed away in June, so I, I'm, I'm doing this for him. So. Good. I'm sure he's with us tonight, Thank enjoying you. So much. you. Thank and, you. And I happy sure about so. his investment in your career. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you Sydney so much. Lett, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anthony Adams, you grew up in Indiana, right? I sure Sullivan, did, yeah. Indiana. Did That's right. Yeah, yeah, Sullivan, Southern Indiana. Yeah. I've got family near there and all up and down Illinois, my mom's side of the family, on a farm. Uh, were, you, were your folks farmers or what were you doing in Seoul? They were not, Indiana? no. Like you were the city kid, the town kids? Oh, yes. And <laughs> yeah. how'd you get involved with music? Well, I, I've sang most of my life, but uh, my cousin, uh, he put a guitar in my hand uh, many years ago and wouldn't let me put it down even when I wanted to. And... Um, we lost him, it's been over 10 years ago now, to a car wreck, and uh, so we do a benefit for him back home to raise uh, money for kids who can't afford instruments, and oh, they actually started a uh, acoustic that. guitar class in our high school from the money we really? raised. Really? Yeah. Oh, so I love that. It's really special, because he always loved to teach people, and, and uh, oh, yeah, I'm glad he did. Well, I have a but, secret for you. It's okay to put the guitar down now. He's not around. Yeah, no, I can't. No, okay. I can't. Just so you'll know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. I love yeah. that, that you're uh, continuing on his legacy, and uh, I'm sure that pleases God it's, a lot. It's a special and, thing. Yeah. yeah, very special thing. Okay. Well, are you guys ready to hear some music? I sure am. Stephen, why don't you kick us off, brother? Well, thank you so much. Um, I mentioned I'm from Texas. I actually have my Something About Texas shirt on, if you guys can see it right now. This is one of... I'm getting ready to release this song I'm about to sing to you um, on October 11th. I'm um, taking a trip down to Texas to play in Austin uh, and also Missouri City where I'll be playing uh, at a benefit uh, for the Family Promise down there. I have a foundation, I'll talk a little bit more about it later, called Giving Guitars. And we've been to 55 homeless shelters in the last 11 months and given away over 100 guitars uh, and raised thousands of dollars for uh, families in need, um, at-risk youth, um, foster care. And so it's been a tremendous 11 months for me and my family using money for it. But at the same time, I want to be able to use my music to uh, obviously help that, that cause. So I'm going to sing you guys a song called Something About Texas. And... Uh, I, I get in arguments sometimes, or not arguments, disagreements with the Alabama boys, you know, Georgia guys, and, you know, the, and we talk about where does country music really come from? Well, we know, you know, the Cash family, you know, obviously up north and whatnot, but there's something about Texas and Texas country. I don't know, you know, it's just, it's pretty unique. So here's a song called Something About Texas. California girls, they really know how to rock your world. Ain't no whiskey like they make down in Tennessee. Colorado skies, what a Rocky Mountain high, and it's hard to beat a Florida white sandy beach. But there's something about, yeah, there's something about that Lone Star sky, those Houston lights, like open arms calling me back home. My Something 
about There ain't no doubt There's something about Texas Something about Texas It ain't just another place It's where real cowboys are made It ain't bragging Come on down, you're gonna see It's where I was born and raised Where my heart is gonna stay And when I'm gone Put that Texas red dirt down on me That lone star sky Those Houston lights Like open arms calling me back home Put my boot heels down On this hallowed ground Any time away is way too long Yeah, down here we all get it And we won't let you forget it Yeah, there's something about it Something about it there ain't no doubt there's something about Texas Something about Texas It's a whole other country Yeah, let me tell you something If you know man, then you know Yeah, it's one big road That song made me want to move to Texas. I love that. <laughs> I've been to the Dallas airport. Does that count? It does. Sweet. All right. Well, how y'all doing tonight? You guys doing good? Oh, come on. Y'all can do better than that. Who's having a good night? Come on. That was a little better. I'll give y'all that one. Well, I decided spur of the moment that uh, this show felt really special. And uh, I'm gonna play two brand new songs that I've never played for anybody. So if you see these cute little blue post-it notes, I'm not gonna look at them, I promise. But in case I do, just, just bear with me. But this is a song that I wrote uh, in my pasture at three in the morning with my ponies. Uh, this one's called Talking to the Wind, here it goes. Ain't too much again. And apologize for my sins. I know he ain't coming back again. So here I am talking to the wind. My truck still won't start. really should take it apart Maybe then I'd go somewhere on my own But here I am Talking to the wind It never answers But in this Chase these dreams away This would be where the fiddle solo would go So just imagine it, alright?
Maybe I'll just buy a boat Just sit around and float Until I finally know who I am I'm the girl Talking to the wind Thank you so much, Ralph. I'll give a shout out to Danny for inviting me out this evening. And uh, also want to pay respects to a legend we lost today, uh, Loretta Lynn. I found out before I came in that she had passed away today. And um, I know she's inspired many young women. Pick up a guitar. It's a fairly new song. It's called Storms Don't Last Forever. Storms don't last forever. The sun will shine again. And if you feel Remember each and every lesson So that you don't keep on repeating All of those same old things that Don't serve you Cause the storms don't last forever The sun will shine again If you feel like you're floating From there you can get back home again from 
Thank you so much. I'm going to play you a song that um, my daughter inspired, Eliana. She was uh, about nine or eight at the time. And um, this was during the pandemic when musicians and artists didn't have anywhere to play. And we were trying to find anything to just obviously keep roof over our head, food on the table. So um, I was, you know, looking and working on the computer and Kelly, I um, mean, Eliana would come up and say, hey, daddy, can you come outside and ride bikes or play hide and go seek or play Barbies or something with me outside? And I'd be like, I can't right now. She goes, well, can you later? I said, yes, I can. She goes, well, do you pinky promise that you can? I said, I do pinky promise. She goes, well, you can't break a pinky promise. She still makes me pinky promise, by the way. I mean, it's like the other day, I don't know what it was, what it, to ride the bikes, that's right. So we went for a bike ride. I pinky promised I had to fulfill that promise. Has anybody ever made a pinky promise in the house? A couple people? All right. Well, you know, it's tough to, you know, say no after you do that thing. And it's like, so I thought it'd be cool to write a song. It got considered for a Grammy, actually, uh, Best Country Song uh, a couple of years ago. Well, about a year ago or so. Um, so I'm going to play it for you now. You can find it on Spotify. And uh, so here's Pinky Promise. Seems just like yesterday when I was holding your little sweet hand Wasn't gonna miss the chance to take you To our first daddy-daughter dance I've shown up late, I've missed some dates Along the way I've made mistakes I even made your little heart break But you love me anyway I'm just learning as I go It's hard to admit when I don't when it's right or when it's wrong and maybe it's taking me a little too long but i'm here to tell you now i never ever want to let you down i'll keep my word cross my heart and when you wish upon a star i'll always be the dad you could trust when you need someone who's honest and keep every pinky promise when you're finally driving on your 16th birthday till the day that you graduate i'll be standing right there beside you when you say i do on your wedding day walking you down the aisle tears in my smile you're so beautiful all dressed in white might take me a while to say goodbye locking fingers one more time i'm just learning as i go it's hard to admit when i don't know when it's right or when it's wrong maybe it's taking me a little too long but i'm here to tell you now i never ever want to let you down i'll keep my word cross my upon a star I'll always be the dad you could trust when you need someone who's honest and keep every pinky promise stronger than my words could ever say I'm just learning as I go it's hard to admit I don't know when it's right, when it's wrong. Maybe it's taking me a little too long, but I'm here to tell you now. I never ever want to let you down. I'll keep my word, cross my heart. And when you wish upon a star, I'll always be the dad you could trust when you need someone who's honest. Yeah, I swear I'll keep every promise Thank you. Thank you.
I'm really grateful I wore waterproof mascara tonight. <laughs> that was so beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, uh, I feel like I've kind of dedicated my life to trying to write kind of old school country songs. And uh, like Andrew said, we lost a legend today. And Loretta was one of the reasons that I wanted to sing when I was very young. And uh, this is a song that I kind of... Uh, kind of picked up on her the way she plays and uh it's probably not anything that she would say in a song but it's i learned how to play guitar just kind of watching her and watching dolly i still can't play with the long nails but i'm hoping one day but uh i feel like we've all kind of we've all dated somebody that maybe wasn't our type at all yeah oh somebody's been there i heard that <laughs> And uh, I I've been there a couple times, but uh, I was raised in the country. I was raised riding horses, and uh, I learned that some people are not. And uh, that's what I wrote this song about. So this one's called Perfect for Someone. Here it goes. I tried to teach you about me. You had no clue. I need simple skies that are blue. Close out on the line, so don't waste my time If you don't want a horse or two Yeah, you're sweet, you're handsome And perfect for someone But that someone just ain't me I change the oil in my truck But you take your car to Valvoline I said on Your jeans to get dry clean Yeah, you're sweet, you're handsome And perfect for someone But that someone just ain't me I want slow dancing to George Strait and Sunset's Fishing down back roads at night The stars on my porch lie While I'm drinking at midnight Alone is just fine with me But you're sweet, you're handsome And perfect for someone But that someone just ain't me Yeah, you're sweet, you're handsome And perfect for someone the sweetheart that someone just ain't me. Thank you so much. What a great audience, aren't they? Top notch. This is a song about uh, find someone that you just don't want to live without. And then navigating the peaks and the valleys. It's called Just Hold On.
Thanks so much. Well, I want to sing this last song and, and really um, thank you all. Appreciate it. You guys are a great audience, and uh, you guys are, are listening, which is awesome. And uh, as songwriters, that's one of the greatest things that we appreciate is just when people listen to the lyrics um, that we spend time on. Uh, remember to follow me at Stephen Cade Country on Instagram, uh, Stephen Cade Music on Facebook and TikTok, and I'm on Twitter and all those fun different places that we have to go on social media. And I do have merch in the back, uh, so I'd appreciate that. My family and I, at one time when we moved from San Diego to uh, Nashville, we were we were like homeless for a couple months because we were making a transition and we were going for it. You know, we went to Cal but from from California to Nashville. It was a long way, and um, it took a lot of a lot of resources to make it happen. And um, and so we just uh, we figured out that you know when it's when when you're homeless, it's like it's a very um, humbling thing. And so we uh, about a year ago, a gentleman by the name of Brent Yates, um, he uh, he started. Well, he actually he, he owned the Mid Ohio Pipeline, and he uh, then sold it and became. Uh, ultra wealthy and he also is a big giver at the same time so 
I met him when I was playing a show here in Nashville, and he's like, hey, why don't you pray in to see what God would do uh, to help others, to help others to do something. So my wife and I were praying about it, and um, she came up with this cool idea called Instruments for Inspiration, and that became Giving Guitars. And so that's what I was talking about earlier, about the uh, 55 homeless shelters. But we are excited because we got some more coming up here. Tupelo, Mississippi will be in Faith Haven. I'll we'll be at the Phoenix Rescue Mission in, um, in uh, Phoenix there in Arizona. And uh, I'm actually going to do something with Gallatin up here at the Shalom Center. What we do is we bring brand new Taylor guitars and we give them to the residents right there. And I perform for them. We take um, video of the entire uh, facility. We promote them. We raise thousands of dollars. It's quite a movement. Go to stephenk.com forward slash giving guitars. You can Google it. We've uh, been getting some, some news clips on it. So we'd appreciate your support in that. And so I thought, what kind of songs am I going to sing when I go into these different shelters. What can you sing to people who are at rock bottom? The family's coming off the streets. Um, and I thought, you know, this would be a cool song to write called Love Doesn't Care. So I'm going to sing that for you now. Uh, here's Love Doesn't Care. Is the dollar given to the man behind the cardboard sign? It's the couple who still hold each other's hand in 95. It's the oath the soldier takes, knowing it might take their life, but they know it's worth the price. It's the feeling that goes deeper than the surface of your skin. It's the hey, come sit with us to that new kid who needs a friend. It's the thing you think you've lost until it finds you once again. It never lies and it never pretends. Love doesn't care if you're wrong or right. It's colorblind, not black and white. It shows up when you don't have a prayer. Love doesn't care, it ain't keeping score. It's open arms and open doors. If you don't have a dime, or you're a millionaire. Love doesn't care. None of us deserve it, you can't earn it anyway. And the good Lord knows I've sure made more than my share of mistakes. And even when I fall, I'm still forgiven every day. Nothing like this amazing grace. Love doesn't care if you're wrong or right. It's colorblind, not black and white. It shows up when you don't have a prayer. Love doesn't care, it ain't keeping score. It's open arms and open doors. If you don't have a dime, you're a millionaire. Keeping us apart. Love doesn't care if you're wrong or right. It's colorblind, not black and white. It shows up when you don't have a prayer. Love doesn't care, it ain't keeping score. It's open arms and open doors. If you don't have a dime, of you're a millionaire. Love doesn't care. That song is so true. I love that. <laughs> well, thank you so much to Denny for having us out tonight. Denny, you've known me 10 years, 12 years. There you are. I see you waving. I can't see nothing up here. <laughs> but I appreciate you asking me to be here. Uh, this last song I'm going to play, uh, somebody really important to me should have been on this stage tonight, too. And uh, unfortunately, we lost him in July. And uh, he was a very, very good friend of mine. His name is Nolan Neal. And he encouraged me when I really didn't have uh, any clue who I wanted to be. And he encouraged me to kind of just do my own thing. And I feel like God puts us here because we have something that only we can say. And we're doing a disservice to ourselves and to him if we don't chase that. And I learned after chasing, thank you. Uh, I learned after chasing record deals and trying to get a, a song on the radio that I was doing it for all the wrong reasons. I, I wanted to write songs that made somebody feel like they weren't alone or encouraged them to do something. And uh, no one kind of encouraged me to write this song, and uh, 
I wrote this song at 3 in the morning in the back of my 66 Mustang one night when I couldn't sleep. But I always say this at every show. If you've got a dream, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how young you are, how underqualified you think you are, if somebody else is better, you got to chase that dream with everything you have in you. So this is your reminder, whatever that is that you feel like you were put here to do, go do it. Because there's nothing that you can't do if you believe in yourself and you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. A good friend told me that uh, if you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, the how figures itself out and somehow you get there. But I don't think you should have to change for anybody. So I wrote this song and uh, it's the title track off the record that we're going to be putting out pretty soon. But this one's called Chase and Train. So go chase one of your own. Here you go. Life is short and love is rare Don't know where I'm going but I'm getting there Tying my heart to these tracks People come and go say you're the next big thing Then you realize they're not listening To who you're trying to be Run you over if you stay too I got wings, but I don't use them. I got flaws, and I can't lose them. And I still don't know where I'm meant to be. I've got a Thank you so much. This last song I'm going to play, it's on a record. I, I brought a handful of records. 
I realize all y'all are going to be coming. So um, <laughs> I got five or six of them. And, um, but you can find me on Instagram and YouTube under Anthony Adams Music. And I also have been doing a monthly residency here in town, uh, one of my favorite spots called Kimbrough's Pick and Parlor. So we'll be there the 19th of this month. Um, so feel free to come on by and hang out with us. This song called Dancing in the Kitchen, I wrote this song with my wife. Thank you. I got one fan right there. And uh, I paid her to be here. I was like, sit in the middle, you know? But uh, I wrote this song with my wife, and we were dancing in, in her apartment, little apartment kitchen when we first met to know music. And I looked over, and there were some petals falling off these flowers that I'd gotten her a few weeks prior. And I kind of sang this first line to her, and she looked at me, and she was like, the hell was that? And I was like, I just made it up. And she's like, well, write that shit down so you don't forget it. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, and music, songs are like that. If you don't stop in the moment and write it, it'll, it'll be gone, you know. So, um, so here it is. It's called Dancing in the Kitchen. I see the petals falling from the flowers that I
Thank you. Anthony Adams, Sydney Lett, Stephen Cade. Thank you. Good job, folks. Good job. And we want you to know that um, Denny Wayne Rudolph on our committee is the one that puts these opening rounds together. Great job, pal. That was a really great round. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So what we're going to do here, friends, um, oh, by the way, there's a donation box in the back. If you want to help us keep this going in the way we want to, um, then please help us out by giving a little donation. There are snacks and drinks over here, restrooms in the lobby. Make it quick, because what we're going to do is a quick turnaround here, and we're, then we're going to uh, present for our Inside the Hits Grammy Award-winning Gordon Kennedy. So you all stick around.
don't even have one. <laughs> I got a Dr. Pepper back there. Let me go, let me go get my I'll go get it. Uh, yeah. Oh, there it is right there. There's a clock right there. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think that's that makes the most sense. Well, welcome back, everybody. Yeah, let's hear it. Come on. Oh, this is, man. Who said that? Was that you? <laughs> she said dogs of peace. Oh, dogs of peace. How do you know one, that? One man? dog. One dog here. Yeah, one present. dog. That's pretty strong. Well, folks, um, welcome back. It's just so great to see you here. And uh, tonight, 
uh, for our Inside the Hits section, we have uh, returning to the stage an incredibly talented man with a big old heart for you and for God. And his name is Gordon Kennedy. Gordon, welcome back, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Thank you. For those of you that have been around a long time, uh, one of his mentors was Jimmy Gentry. If you remember Coach Jimmy Gentry, good friends. And He and I were born on the same day of the year. Really? Yeah. We shared a birthday, and it, every several years it fell on Thanksgiving. And I oh. said, and I, when we, I found out we had the same birthday, I said, hey, Coach, isn't that something that our birthday falls on Thanksgiving every several years? And he said, God, and that's the reason to have Thanksgiving. <laughs> If y'all know Coach Gentry, you know it was like talking to Foghorn Leghorn, right? <laughs> miss, I miss that man. Uh, yeah. I can't think of it. I, I hear his accent, his voice in my head all the time. Uh, miss, that's good. Miss, miss. Yeah. Um, so the, the accolades for Gordon are through the roof. I mentioned he's a Grammy Award winner. He and a couple of writers wrote a song that Eric Clapton recorded called Change the World, if you remember that. You might hear that this evening. And that won a Grammy Award. Did that win an Oscar even for Best Song in a Motion Picture? No. John Travolta was mad that uh -huh. it wasn't able to be nominated. And that's because Winona Judd recorded it first. So the Oscars only consider a song for a film if it was written for the oh, film. film. Oh, yeah, so. man, that's no good. So, anyway, we're, we weren't too upset about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So he's had a, a Clapton Grammy Award winner. Also written songs, many, many, many songs for Garth Brooks. Written many, many songs for Peter Frampton. Many, many songs for Bonnie Raitt, four Bonnie Raitt singles. Um, also Faith Hill, Tim McGraw, uh, Martina McBride, Nickel Creek, if any of you are instrumental aficionados, you know that band. Allison Krauss, uh, Don Henley, and Stevie Nicks, and Trisha Yearwood boy might may be able to make something of himself if he sticks with it. He's also played on record, master guitar player, great guitar player. I'll tell you a story about that in a second. But he's played on record. Reba's, uh, McIntyre's first record Gordon played on. He was a student at Belmont, and he snuck away to play on that, that record. And uh, he may be get to play on another one here very soon with Miss McIntyre that he wrote. We'll see. Not a done not a done deal. Uh, played on Garth's records, Frampton, Faith, Shadaisy, Billy Ray Cyrus. Played on records for, for Kenny Loggins, Michael McDonald. And if any of you are Christian music fans, back in the day, was an integral part of the band Whiteheart. So, yeah, that's pretty good. And, and Dogs of, dogs dogs of, of Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. <laughs> so my favorite story about Gordon is that he was in line to pick up his kids at F. No, Battleground Lipscomb Academy? Elementary. Lipscomb Elementary. I was dropping the, in, them off. In his car, in the pickup line to get his kids from school, phone rings. He picks it up. Hello, Gordon. This is whoever. Simon Climey. Uh, Simon Climey. Yes, I'm, I'm here in the studio with Eric at Clapton. And uh, we can't quite figure out uh, how you play the guitar on your demo. Would you uh, please help us? Hands the phone to Eric Clapton. And here's Gordon waiting to pick up his kids, telling Eric freaking Clapton how to play the guitar <laughs> on the song they recorded. That just knocks me out, man. He was, he was so sweet. I'd met him at the Grammys six years prior, and so here they are calling me. They're recording a, a different song and wanting to know if I could send the guitar parts. And I said, I'll just call you and tell you over the phone how to do it, you know. And then I talked to the producer who put me on the phone with Clapton's rhythm guitar player, a guy named Andy Fairweather Lowe. Oh, my. How Andy English Bruce is that? Andy Fairweather Lowe, yeah. yes. And then he says, after I you know, tell him and explain over the phone, he says, well, I think we got it. And he says, well, listen, Eric wants to say hello. And I'm like, oh, you know, Gleason, humming, 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 you know. <laughs> and uh, he comes to the phone, hello, Gordon. And I said, listen, before you say anything else, thank you again for what you did for us six years ago, the Grammys. He said, Oh, it's very sweet, very kind. Listen, are you using a pick or your fingers? Right to the guitar, yeah, baby. Right to guitar Right speak. to the guitar, yeah. yes. Well, um, the thing that I've noticed about you, one of the many things, but this is a, a real telltale sign of how you've lived your life, are all these long-term relationships you have. You've been with Garth how many years? Have you totaled it up? Well, my brother was hiring, Brian was hiring him to sing demos when he first came to Nashville. So, but he would, my brother would tell 
Garth early on about songs I was writing with and project I was doing with Wayne Kirkpatrick. Yes. So I remember my brother calling me one day saying, hey, Garth wanted me to tell you, this is when Garth's career was just starting to, you know. He said, uh, Garth wanted me to tell you he got a speeding ticket listening to your song White Flag driving through Arkansas. Oh. I said, I'll put that on my resume. <laughs> yeah, and you have just now. And, but that was like in 1991 or two, and then several years go by, and Garth does the Chris Gaines album, and that was one of the songs he put on the record. Oh, yeah. So I had 10 songs on that record, Jeez. and three of them were the ones he was listening to speeding through speeding Arkansas. Through Arkansas. Yeah. And Gordon just finished up with the uh, stadium tour just this weekend. Finished up the stadium tour with Garth Brooks. It was going on for four years, give or take a COVID plague or two. Yeah, we did one show in 2020 only, and then we did five last year. So this year was kind of the makeup year, and we played, I think, 17 cities, yeah. and we finished with five shows in Dublin uh, the weekend before last, uh, five nights at Croke Park, 84,000 people a night. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So all that to say is I'm happy to be sitting down playing music. Yeah. That's what he said when he got here. Hi, Gordon. How are you doing? He said, I just want to sit down. I just want to <laughs> in one place. Um, there's that. There's uh, with Frampton. You played 10 years or more with Peter uh, I've been working with him for 22 years. 22 years of there. Bonnie Raitt. I've had five songs cut by her. Four of them were singles. She's so wonderful. Such a talent. Probably one of my favorite slide guitar players, yeah. period. And then she's just been so good to us. Um, 15 years? How long? Uh, probably closer to 20. Gosh. So that says a lot about a person when you, you're working with incredibly talented she, people she and they actually, want you around. She called me 10 days after Garth called to ask if I would do the stadiums tour. But this was in the fall of 2018. She called me 10 days later and asked me if I would go on the road. Wow. And I was, I'm like, you're just 10 days Ooh. late, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, it worked out all yeah, right. Yeah, it worked out all and right. He'll have, so. he'll have another chance. <laughs> but anyway, it says a lot about the man. He's uh, come back tonight to be with you, and we very much appreciate that. How about some music? Gordon Kennedy. Thanks, Dan. Listen, I appreciate getting to come back here. I think it's been about four years. Um, maybe it was May. I think somebody told me May of 19. So I just started the Garth thing then. Because I remember Dan praying for me that night when I was getting ready to go out and, and do some more shows. I remember you prayed for me in my journey. And uh, those prayers were answered, my friend. I'll tell you that. Garth is one of those guys that when he calls and says, what are you doing right now? And the answer always is, whatever you're about to say. <laughs> whatever you're about to say, that's what I'm doing right now. So it's just always... We're going to go meet with him next week to find out what 2023 and 2024 look like working for him. So I'm going to go back and do some more stuff with him. All right, let me do this. I got to blow the uh, dust off. Of the, I, I'm, I got to blow Branson out of my lungs. I just came back from doing some shows up there with him. The guy who owns and operates Bass Pro stores, uh, he built or was building a venue and he wanted Garth to be the first person to play there. So Garth showed up to be the first person to play there. The venue wasn't finished yet. So we played in uh, basically a, like a dust bowl. And after four days of that, everybody came out with this dry cough. And so I get to try to blow that off my throat tonight. Anyway, here, I'll do one of these Bonnie Raitt songs just to do that. I got the wanderlust It's somewhere else or bust Yeah, I'm just a hello Goodbye, honey It's been good And it must be going restless I guess When I'm in one place for too long I don't know why I'm like the wind And it must be blowing free it must be Gypsy See? 
Thank you. Thanks so much. How many of you were here when I played four years ago? Oh, not so, not too many. That's good. So I don't, I'm not in danger of repeating myself too bad tonight. Um, so I'll tell you this little story about just so you know where I come from. I'm, I've been in the music business since I was four. And the reason I say that is because my, my father, Jerry Kennedy, who was in the Musicians Hall of Fame and Museum along with six other gentlemen that collectively make up this group known as the Nashville A-Team Players. They all got inducted into the Musicians Hall of Fame back in 2007. And when Brenda Lee inducted them, she said, these seven gentlemen collectively account for over 130,000 recording sessions, which a session constitutes around three songs, four songs maybe, on a good day, on a quick day. So that's how many, so consequently, I'm this kid in the back seat and my two brothers, I'm the oldest of three. And on the family vacation, be it a three hour drive or a 10 hour drive, it didn't matter. The entire ride, my dad is reaching for the volume on the radio going, I think I played on this. I think I played on this. And if you were to listen to satellite radio now and like, classic country from 60s, 70s, on into the 80s, on those stations, he's probably either a producer or a player or both on about one out of every three songs they play. So he's got his fingerprints on a lot of stuff that you all know. He is the electric guitar on this song. Pretty woman walking down the street. See, y'all can tell I'm the son of the guitar player and not the singer, but... So, I mean, he's the electric guitar on that. He's on Stand By Your Man. He's on, uh, he's the Dobro look stuff on uh, Harper Valley PTA. All that real slinky Dobro stuff is him. He's, uh, he's on Elvis, Good Luck Charm. He's on uh, Leroy Van Dyke, Just Walk On By. Wait on the corner, that's my dad. Um, he played on Bob Dylan's double album, double uh, Blonde on Blonde double album, Ringo Starr's second solo record, um, on and on and on and on and on. And as a producer, though, and an A&R man, which he was running Mercury Records starting in 1964, and he ran the label for 21 years, he signed 
Reba, he signed the Statler Brothers, Johnny Rodriguez, Tom T. Hall. And, but in 1964, one of the first artists he signed was this guy named Roger Miller, who had just kind of been floating around as a songwriter up to that point. And you got to remember that my dad, when he went to the first ever songwriter meeting to listen to new songs for the artists on the label, they went to a hotel room and there was a guitar being passed around by Harlan Howard, Hank Cochran, Willie Nelson, and Roger Miller. Those were the four writers that were, well, listen to this song. And no, you, well, you listen to this song, you know. That was my dad's first song pitch meeting was with those four writers. And he would in, end up signing Roger in 1964 to Mercury Records. And he had picked for the first single off the first album a song called Got To Again. And then raise your hand if you know Roger Miller, Got To Again. Nobody. Nobody knows that song. Well, that's mine and my brother Brian's fault. And, I, and I'm four years old and Brian is two. My dad brings home that test pressing, that first test, you know, they, it's a, they call it an acetate or test pressing. And it's this thick lacquer record. And so he's listening to each song, making sure the distance between the songs is proper. There's not one song louder or quieter than the rest. And that just last minute before they take it to press. And he'd already selected this song, Got To Again, to be the first single. And I'll play you a little bit of what that was. That song is Roger pretending he's in front of an audience, much like I am in front of you right now. And he was singing this. Now, this is a song about numbers. I need somebody to give me a number between 20 and 22. Somebody in the back yells, 21, he goes, very good, all right. Let's see. He said, let's see what we can do. And he sings, 21, take away nine, 12 little children standing in line. From that take two, that leaves you 10. Take away eight and you got to again. Well, you got to again, you got to again. You used to love me once and now you got to again. So that was going to be Roger's first single. There's a fly up here. And so he's listening to the test pressing, and he plays that song, and he plays a few other songs, and then he gets to this other song. And then me and my brother, Brian, I'm four, he's two, clad only in our underwear, come tearing down the staircase into my dad's little makeshift office in the basement and just start dancing our little tails off to this other song. And my dad's sitting there looking at us, and he goes, uh-oh. He called the head of Mercury Records in Chicago and said, how tough would it be to change the A-side on Roger's first single to a different song? And the president of Mercury said, how sure are you about this? Because we've already pressed 5,000 discs. And my dad, looking at the two underwear-clad A&R underwear boys, you know, he said, I'm sure. So they ground those records up and started over with this as the A-side. <laughs> Well, Aaron said, I get an idea. Ain't nothing but a fool would live like this. Out all night, running wild while my woman's sitting home with a month old child. I said, Dang me, dang me. They ought to take a rope and hang me. I, I, it's true. Woman, would you weep for me? One more time. Well, I'm sitting now, I'm drinking with the rest of the guys, and six rounds bought, and I bought five. I spent the groceries and half the rent, like fourteen dollars and twenty-seven cents. I said, "Dang me, dang me, they ought to take a rope and hang me up on the highest tree." Woman, would you weep for me? They say that roses are red and violets are purple And sugar's sweet and so is maple syrup. And I'm the seventh out of seven sons My pappy was a pistol, I'm a son of a gun I said, dang me, dang me They ought to take a rope and hang me High from the highest tree Woman, would you weep for me?
Thank you. So that was the stuff my dad was bringing home. And, you know, most, a lot of families have their fondest memories of, as a family, watching their favorite TV show, Partridge Family, uh, uh, whatever it was back in the day when we were kids. But for me, it was all of us sitting in the den and watching a reel-to-reel tape machine and the, and the tapes rolling on those reels. And whatever he had done fresh in the studio that day with the likes of Jerry Lee Lewis, he produced all his country stuff, and, and Roger and the Statler brothers and all that. And um, so I always felt like when I grew up and started writing songs that, you know how you always have the depiction of somebody sitting on your shoulder, an angel or whoever it is. I got Roger Miller sitting over here. And then over here, because my dad brought me their first record, I, I have the Beatles sitting over here on this shoulder, fighting each other to see who can get most of their DNA into whatever the song is I'm working on. And I'm happy if they either one wins. So. But to see if you don't hear a little bit of uh, those two influences, when Disney called me in 2002 and asked if I would write a song and ended up writing two songs for the Fox and the Hound 2 movie. And they wanted me to write um, a chase scene, Todd and Copper, and you know they said, give us uh, just a verse and a chorus of your idea, and then if we like it, we'll green light you to finish that. And, and so I went away to do that. And then I had this other piece of music that Blair Masters, a friend of mine who's a keyboard player, had just been fooling around in the studio one day and he played this progression. Oh, that note right there caught my ear because I fully expected him to go, but he went there instead. Let's play that again. So so he did that a couple times. I said, let me record that. And then we sort of fleshed out a piece of music and then tucked it away. And then Like I said, subsequently, Disney called. So I went away after meeting with them. Uh, It's probably Disney making sure that they're getting the royalties for what I'm about to do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, but just as I was working on this up-tempo chase scene thing, I thought, hmm, I wonder if I just finish this... This little sweet lullaby kind of thing, because I wonder if I finished that and sent it to him, what they would do. So I finished, I asked Blair, I said, you mind if I just follow this? And he said, yeah, do whatever. And, and sent the song, that song completed, along with the verse and the chorus of the other thing. Two weeks later, I get a call, Kim Oliver from Disney. The song that we asked you to write, we like it, so we want you to finish it. And I was like, wow, that never happens. I've had songs in movies over the years and never written for the film, you know. This is the exception, so that was kind of amazing. And then she said, now this other thing that we didn't ask for. I thought, here it comes. You know, she said, we love it, and we're going to create a place in the movie for that song. So I was blown away. Trisha Yearwood ended up doing this in the film. Um, but I'll, and she does it more of like a, a ballad. Kind of like that motion, you know, like a, something that they, they needed a ballad for the film, so they said, we're going to channel that into that vein. But I'll play the way I wrote and did the demo. Um, and again, see if you can't hear a little bit of Roger over here, because, you know, he did all the music for Robin Hood, Disney film. And see if you can hear a little bit of McCartney over here. Um, anyway, this is how this song goes. When we are together, I know that forever I'll always my days follow you into the blue beyond. Dream with one another, help each other over the Follow you into the blue beyond. I never want to be anywhere. I cannot see the love light. You shine. I only want to be wherever. Running with my friend. 
Ashley and Winona Judd, who've gone through a very tough time recently. This is a song that Wayne Kirkpatrick and I wrote for Winona to do in an Ashley film. So both sisters, uh, uh, this is for them. The movie was called Someone Like You. It was Ashley Judd and Hugh Jackman. But Hey, Bill, I might get you to turn my vocal down just a little bit up here and the guitar down as well. Everybody, how about a hand for Bill who pulls this stuff together so fast? Also, I want to thank the lovely people over there for feeding me tonight. You're so sweet, and, and all of you have been so kind. Thank you.
set you a world apart and makes you you are Thank you. You guys doing okay? Just get the hook out for me when you're tired of it. Uh, let's see. I, and I, I wrote down some songs that I wanted to have just within eye shot here of stuff that I might play. And of course, every time I get in a church, I want to get right into that stuff. Um, I've done a couple of records with one of my favorite human beings as well as artists, a guy named Ricky Skaggs. And I did this record with him called Mosaic some years back and, uh, and um, wrote, co-wrote all the songs for that and got to produce the album with him and just be in the studio with him and just be under, under the Lord for four months of my life in which the only way to describe it would be to say that a record that we started working on within a couple of weeks was a record that was working on us. And probably the most powerful project I've ever been a, a part of in my life. So let me do a, I want to do some of that for you. And I love this particular song too because I get to mention my, my grandmother, Memo. <laughs> I was uh, messing with a guitar one day. I uh, was playing George's. Here comes the sun, right? And then when I had the capo up here to mess with that song, I found this other chord shape. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And what, where would I go from there? And I found, so there's that's the little progression. That's all it takes to start a song sometimes. But you'll see where when I get to the third verse of this song, that the song I was messing around with, Here Comes the Sun, you'll hear the, the other son show up in the third verse of this song. And this is called The Shepherd's Voice. And it's from the Mosaic record that I did with Ricky. Now when I was fresh from God, the first thing I heard as I came into this life was the sound of fear ringing in my ear my own voice his life hit me and I cried as I grew through the years the chorus of temptation beckoned me to come and sing a part but Jesus was a name that rolled from my mama's tongue settled in my Now what I'm listening for Through all the noise A whisper in my ear The shepherd's voice The confusion that the bustle brings Pretty song the siren sings Sound of teeth against forbidden fruit the fallen man who screams in pain Beneath the strain, who could hope to ever hear the truth? But what I'm listening for through all the noise, a whisper in my ear, the shepherd's voice. life and I am done I'm gonna close my eyes and let my spirit still 
till I hear the sun. And what I'm listening for through all noise. A whisper in my ear, a shepherd's voice. And what I'm listening for. Thank you. Thanks so much. Here's another one from that record. Naked alone, cold cobblestone, they beat him until the blood ran. They brought him to die on a cross up on high With spikes through his feet and his hands Oh, well, you can use him, abuse him, mock and accuse him and Sell him out for 30 pieces Betray him, slay him, do the devil's mayhem But you can't shake of thorns on his brow his eyes on the crowd all of God's daughters and sons they're spitting on him cursing at him forgive them for what they have done well you can use him, abuse him mock and accuse him, sell him out for 30 Betray him, slay him, do the devil's man, but you can't shake Jesus. Well, I Bouts, questions and doubts You know there are those who deceive I've tried to resist Escape and dismiss But there's one who's shadowing me And I can lose my religion Break with tradition And say I hold out till hell freezes I can test him, try him, I just can't deny him, no I can't shake Jesus, no I can't shake Jesus. Thank you. I'll do one for you that um, Ricky, this was the last song he did on the record because he was afraid to sing it. Um, and I think, honestly, it probably was just he didn't know if his voice would hit the note. You know, and so we got in, had a little skull session in the control room, and I said, let me hit it. I'll hit it, and you sing a harmony underneath, and that's how we pulled this record off. And his manager, Charlotte, said, I'm so glad I'll put that on the record. That's my favorite one on the record. You know, God, he works stuff out. And, um, but this is, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is called You'll Find God. And it's uh, the story of, you know, the disciples in the boat with Jesus, and he's asleep when the storm hits. And it, it, he wasn't mad that they woke him up because he was sleeping. I think it hurt him 
that they did because he realized they didn't know who he was because they were so afraid. And he was right there with them. So it's kind of like, don't you, hey, how long have we known each other? That kind of thing, you know. Uh, anyway. Again, I'm, I'm trying not to play friends in low places right now. So. <laughs> Muscle memory. Rising tides, tempest lies from the day you're born. You could row and never know the calm inside the storm that's raging on. Get to rocking, and you're the lightning rod. Don't forget that they're in the back of your boat. Fast asleep, you'll find God. Darkness falls, a furious squall. Your fear. He talks to it and walks upon it and answer to our cry, saying it is I. And when the waves get to rocking and you're the lightning rod, don't forget that they. I'm, and you saw it happen just there. Sometimes I'm listening to these songs and I wrote them. But sometimes I, when I'm singing, I'm realizing I'm too, and was too originally, the day I wrote it, to be the hearer of that song. So I was the hearer of, of that song just then. Sometimes I'm, I listen to it and I get up, get sideways, you know, it's because that message is, instead of coming here and out to you, it's coming here and get stuck right there and so that happens every once in a while
Here's one that's slightly uh, autobiographical. I did not steal the candy from the jar. I stole ice cream from the cafeteria. But the rest of it is about me and could be about any, any of us. Uh, and, and sometimes I think, it made me laugh one time because I've heard people say, well, God must not be finished with me yet, you know. And I think, you know, is that sometimes they're telling them that's the reason why they're living so long. It must not be finished with me yet. But I think we're all a work in progress. Anyway, that's what this is about. Well, I, I was a hellion in my day. I tried to get away on a horse that wasn't mine. Yeah, I, I stole the candy from the jar. But I only got so far whenever I would cross the line. They would catch me every time. They'd say, what in the world is wrong with you? You got some growing up to do. Life don't spare the rod. I guess God must not be finished with me yet. Yeah, I get another day to live. Be forgiven and forgive Plow the field, mend the fence Yeah, I, I may go out and paint the barn Where the years have done much harm Till I've covered each offense Till there's nothing that I've missed And it's gonna take a time, no doubt I'm still trying to work this out this ain't no facade I guess God must not be finished with me yet I guess God must not be finished with me yet Well, I've got a bit of work to do He's got a bit of work to do well, I, I should have lost it all by now But I stayed above somehow With these demons in the mist Maybe I will live a little longer if I have to Put off the ever after Till I check them off my list Till there's nothing that I miss I know my house needs cleaning up And I owe my neighbor 20 bucks Stay the firing squad I guess God must not be finished with me yet Until he gives the nod I guess God must not be finished with me yet Thank you. Here's another one that's uh, a little bit, a little bit me in the first verse, and a little bit all of us from thereafter. Um, I was born on a Saturday morn, ooh, and they gave me a name. Said he's got his daddy's hands and his mama's eyes. Another link in the chain Everybody came Nothing beats a family Nothing beats a family You can look around You will see Nothing beats a family Then I grew a little I thought I knew a lot Ooh, more than anyone I left them in my dust While I bent their trust Ooh, just like a prodigal son But even after you run Nothing beats a family 
nothing beats a family You can look around and you will see Nothing beats a family When the world will weigh a ton When the world will come undone Who's gonna love you the way That's on, uh, by the way, it's on Ricky Skaggs' Music to My Ears record. Uh, I produced that with him back in 2012. We got to work with Barry Gibb on that record, by the way. BG, Barry Gibb. I'll never, ever, ever forget that. Me and Ricky and the two engineers were trying to act so cool, like this is no big deal. You know? We're standing there looking at each other like, yeah, Barry Gibb's out there singing on the mic right now. Yeah, it's just another day at the office. Yeah. And, then I looked up on the TV monitor over the control room board, and I saw Ricky's wife drive up, Sharon. I saw her get out of the car, and, and she came to the door, and then she disappeared. But I knew she was going down the hall that way, down the hall that way. And then I could see her as she rounded the turn to come into the control room, this distance from me, the podium there, right? He's out there singing on the mic, and she's just got out of her car with this bounce to her step and came in and made her way down there, and then she gets to come down the hall. And I remember going, yeah, that's how I feel inside right now, but I can't show this, you know. She, did, she was physically demonstrating what I was thinking at the time. So I, I think because it's on the poster for the tonight's event, one of the songs that they put on there that I have, uh, have in my catalog is a song called Lost in You. Does anybody know? Y'all know that song at all? Upwards of one people know that song. I've never sung this to an, an audience. I've played it. I played it on the TV show The View with Garth singing it, you know. But this was on that Chris Gaines record. I've sung this song once in my life to just my wife sitting in the, in the room with her because it's, I, I have to sing that head tone or falsetto Barry Gibb voice to do this. It's like a... There's no more waiting. So if I sing like that, can y'all hear that okay? So Bill, work with me. I'm going to play soft, but you might need to turn my vocal up. I don't know. There's in you what 
It's this feeling I've never known before That I should dare to swear to surrender evermore That's what I Okay, that's me uh, going way out on the limb in front of you. Just, I don't do that stuff, as you can tell. How about, uh, I got a couple more songs I'll do for you. How about one that I did with Peter Frampton? This guy, I love this, this guy. His talent is off the charts. I think people get... They, they get so caught up in the image that he was back in the day with the fair faucet hair and the, and the talk box, blah, 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 you know, all the gimmick. And, but, I mean, the guy wrote great songs. And as a guitar player, he's probably one of my two or three favorite ever to walk the planet. But, I mean, again, most of you know the... You know, baby, I love your way. And show me the way. And do you feel like I do? And, but, you know, he has been making music um, up until now. And so I've been able to work with him for the last 22 years. And one of the things that we ended up doing is because for a time he lived in Cincinnati and the ballet, Cincinnati Ballet, called him up. We're thinking about doing a ballet and using your music. And well, he was blown away. Oh, that's so incredible. So what do I need to do? Do I need to bring you the CDs? You know, or what do you need? And, and they said, no, we want you to come play live at the ballet. Oh, okay. So they would put the band back on the back of the stage, the dancers, ballet dancers here in the audience. And there would be three different kinds of people in the audience. There were people that had season tickets to the ballet. And then there were the people that wanted to see Frampton in concert. And then there were the people that wanted to see these two worlds collide, you know. And so... But in the process of him saying, okay, so how does this work? You know, we want you to play live, and it's three acts, 30 minutes per act. That's how ballet is. And he said, okay, great. I've got enough music, you know, through the years. That and they said, why don't you uh, write some new music for the ballet? You know, for one, it's like, it's like act two. Make that be the, this like all new music. And he goes, okay, that sounds great. And then, of course, he told, he told, you know, he told me later, he hung up the phone and went, what did I just agree to? And he called me up and said, let's write for a ballet. So we did. And you know what? It was wonderful because you're not thinking, some, getting something on the radio, whatever. We would write songs where like two minutes of instrumental and then all of a sudden there's this sung chorus, you know, that only happens once and then it goes back to playing guitar. So there was, there was kind of no parameters and preconceived anything and so but he had told me the story about his grandfather who fought in both world war one and two and he had brought back from the orient this box that looked like a chunk of wood but it was very ornate had some art on it and he said that when he was five years old his grandfather would put this box in front of him and say open it well he would try to figure out he said there weren't any apparent hinges grooves or anything on this thing 
And I can't do it, granddad, you show me. So he pulled this little piece of veneer this way and then slide this, this, and it was a puzzle. So as you learned how to open this thing up and you would get to the bottom, there was a little drawer with a stuffed hummingbird in it. And Peter was telling me this story and he said, you know, I think that was my earliest childhood lesson of if you do the right moves, and he applied this to guitar playing later, you know, good things happen. His first life lesson from his grandfather. So he had this piece of music. He, and so Peter gives me this, and I take his hummingbird story and go away and craft a lyric for it. And this is the title track for the ballet record I did with Peter Frampton. Let that soak in for a second. Anyway, hummingbird in a box. And when they did it, one single dancer danced to this. She was from New Orleans. Of course, her name was Jessica Touche. Perfect. There is a puzzle in the wood blocks Inside a mystery that unlocks Inside a hummingbird in a box I'll get it right. A gift from the Orient A young boy amused The wise old granddad said Inside a mystery that unlocks You'll find a hummingbird in a box The inlay is beautiful The secret concealed It's not just a bird inside the joy in the boy is revealed. There is a puzzle in the wood blocks. Inside a mystery that unlocks. You'll find a hummingbird in a box. A puzzle in the wood blocks. Inside a mystery that unlocks. You'll find a Got time for one more? One more? Well, this, will, this is the thing that opens the doors for me around the world. I got to, uh, most recently, my adventure was in Dublin, Ireland, and we, we were going to do three shows with Garth the first weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then the following Friday, Saturday, and that was it. And so Sunday night, the Netflix documentary crew came around and, and said to me, they'd already visited me about, can we come and interview you because of your family ties to the country, you know, Kennedy? And I said, yeah. And then by Sunday night, though, they had shifted gears and said, how about we take you to a pub 
and let you sit in with somebody. And, and I said, yeah, that'd be great. I said, now I don't know about going and sitting in and trying to play the traditional Irish music, you know, because that'd be like, um, you know, being on the Indianapolis Speedway when they throw the green flag and I look around, I'm the only one on a moped. So I didn't, I was, I said, how about I go somewhere and just plug in a guitar and sing a song or something, you know? And they were like, yeah. And they called the next day and they had put it together for a place called Bruxelles, which is this pub where the group Thin Lizzy cut their teeth and down in Temple Bar area in Dublin. There's going to be a rock band. They're going to do four songs and then turn it over to you. So I got up and, and after they had done their four songs, I started playing this. <laughs> And I got that far, and the band jumped in, started playing behind me. And I went, oh, the band's playing. And then I went, oh, the band's playing. Because this never goes well when somebody tries to sit in on this song. It's always, there's somebody that's going to take it and careen it into the wall over there. And these guys played that song perfectly. And I'm sitting there singing and thinking, who are these guys? There's this band called the Controversial All-Stars. They play weddings and uh, session players or whatever, but they tore it up. And, and then I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe how well that went. So I wanted to be done then. And just the, the addendum to the story is that the guy, everybody in the room is m making me do one more song, and the director of the Netflix thing is like, you got to do one more song. So I turn around and ask these guys, do you all know Pretty Woman? At Orbison, and they went, yeah. So, and then they just nailed that song too. Then I was done. And next thing I know, I'm on this Irishman's shoulders. He's dancing around the room. People are trying to buy me shots of this and Guinness that, and and um, and I, I, I still can't believe it. I'll have to watch the Netflix thing just to prove to myself that all that happened. But anyway, so, but this is the song. This is the reason why all of that stuff happened that night. I, I, I think about the things that would not be so if it weren't for this song. I wouldn't have worked with Frampton. I know that. But anyway, um, shoot, I may not be here tonight doing this for you, but this is the thing that sort of opens the doors uh, for me for many years now. This was a Grammy song of the year. If I could reach the stars Pull one down for you I'd shine it on my heart So you could see the truth And this love I have inside Is everything it seems But for now I find only in my dreams I can change the world I would be the sunlight in your universe You would think my love was really something good Baby, if I could I'd change If I could be the king Even for one day I'd take you as my queen And I'd have you no other way And I'm love with you In this kingdom we had made Till then I'll be a fool Wishing for a day I can change the world I would be the sunlight in your universe Yeah, you would think my love was really something good Baby, if I could i change the world If I could, I would If I could
Dan, is that enough? Under the people. Thank you all so much. Gordon Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. The Gordon Kennedy. Gordon, Gordon just said he'll stick around and chat if anybody wants to visit. So thank you. I want to thank Anthony and Sydney and Stephen for the fine opening set that you guys did. <clears throat> and again, thanks to you for coming out, driving out. We'll uh, be back on November 1st. Headliner to be announced. Gordon, thank you for taking us inside your hits. It was fantastic. And folks, remember, share the music you love with the people you love. Good night.